Well, thank you, Mr. Chairman, and you know, I'd like to thank the witnesses. This has been pretty informative. Uh, I did make a trip last week down to uh, the Port of Entry in Nogales, again, to get myself up to speed on this issue. And Mr. Sand, I, I would first of all agree with you. They're, they're dramatically increasing the infrastructure down at Nogales, but even as the infrastructure stands now, they're understaffed. They're not at full capability. Uh, have we, in our desire to beef up the Border Patrol, and I don't want this to be a competition, but have we concentrated too much on Border Patrol, not enough on, on customs agents at those ports of entry? Well, you know, the bigger problem with the, the agents at the, at the port of entry is uh, keeping them. Uh, they have a, a much higher attrition rate than you would think. And of course, now the economy is, is not as good in shape as it was just a couple of years ago, so it, it's stagnant. But they have um, uh, an authorization of about 20,700. They're at about maybe 1,200 short of that. Uh, you know, they get close to it, it comes back, close to it, it comes back. They try to staff the bigger ports like Nogales to, to the best of their ability, but it's difficult to get um, agents to go to places that aren't very attractive or that are very expensive. So they're up against some real challenges there. I mean, I would say, first of all, that the level of dedication of those individuals was high. I mean, it's very impressive. It seems like they cycle people through, a lot of, a lot of military folks go through a training program. Is that pretty much the standard? Uh, uh, mode of operation in terms of staffing those? Yeah, I haven't seen too many military people in the primary booths. I've seen them sometimes assist in secondary. They're mostly um, spotters, almost like the, um, the cartel people in the mountains. I mean, they also are in the mountains looking for people trying to get into the country and alert the Border Patrol to get there. I haven't seen too many of them at the ports. Okay. I would kind of like to turn my attention just in terms of this definition of a secured border, because it, it is critical. I mean, if, if we're going to actually move, I think, to the next stage, I think most people, a lot of us do talk about we have to secure the border first. And without definition, you never get to that second stage, which I think we absolutely have to get to. So what is the stumbling block? I mean, what, what, where, where does the argument occur? Uh, why can't we come up with a definition? Well, I'm not sure that we've really just forced ourselves to confront that issue. I mean, I, 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 and I'm glad to hear, I'm, I'm, I think, that this hearing and your leadership on this is a good point is a, is is very important and and I'm glad to hear you say what you're saying that it is legitimate to be asking these questions because the debate basically has been a debate where border control is is bandied about as we don't have it uh, uh, we need it uh, well you know we're only going to get it if we do other legislation well, we've got to get we've got to go deeper than that. And um, uh, so I think if there is, you know, a recognition in the Congress and committees like this to ask those questions, and um, I would hope that, um, uh, that, that, that the administration and the Department of Homeland Security are uh, uh, interested in answering those questions because of the, uh, you know, as part of the overall case that they make about their efforts, that maybe there is a way here to come together on thinking, th having a, a more shared view of what we're really striving for um, as, as, as the basis for having a more honest debate. Do, does anybody have a recommendation for a definition? Well, uh, I think we could come up with one. Well, Senator Johnson, I, I did recite a definition that uh, probably is very similar to what the Border Patrol used before they rejected the definition. But uh, it is to be able to uh, detect border intrusions and to respond effectively to those. That's what's expected. Uh, I think the challenge is that there's really two questions. One is, what is operational control? And then once you define that, uh, how do you achieve 100 percent operational control and how much is it going to cost? And I think that's the, the challenge, so that if we've only achieved half, less than half operational control, what's it, the American public is going to say, what's going to cost to do the whole thing? And that's their expectation. And that's where we've got to be honest with them. It's going to be a gradual process to get there because of budgetary constraints. I mean, define detection. Well, detection, and that's where it would come in helpful to know when there's a border intrusion. That's where we have to use technology. Uh, you know, it is the integrated towers. It's to be able to know whenever there's an intrusion and then that's the detection part. And if we're not able to respond, then that gives us the statistics as to what's our batting average. And it tells us a great deal more information when we know what our, uh, we have the detection capability. And I think that's where we have to accelerate the technology side. You ask about more personnel and the boosts and so on. That's always an issue. We need to continue to do that. But it's the, uh, you can, 
you can be more flexible in your personnel when you invest in the technology side. Yeah, I would agree with that. You know, it, uh, it having what they call situational awareness is key, because otherwise you don't know what you don't know, and it's hard to come up with a denominator that we've been talking about. What's the, the universe of people crossing the border? Um, the, the newer technology, the tower technology is useful. Uh, some of the MSSs, I don't know if you've been down to the border, saw the truck with the 25-foot boom that comes up, there's a camera in the right. They have a laser pointer on them. Not only do they detect it, but they point it out with the, to the Border Patrol where to go to apprehend. And that would be a very useful thing. I mean, not only do you have situational awareness, you have someone guiding you to the target. So I think there's other things along those lines that could be done. Now, we have achieved some pretty good successes, like you mentioned in Yuma. Uh, we're, we're measuring that in some way, shape, or form. So, so why not use that exact same measurement? I mean, how, how is that occurring? Yeah, that's Go basically ahead. apprehensions. I mean, the, yeah. the, 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 it's, it's apprehensions, and it's as we were talking earlier. It's a sense in the community, and it is a recognition that there are that there is a concentration of resources that is actually changing the circumstances on the ground. People do not feel, experience, see the kind of. Uh, lawlessness and, and uh, uh, chaotic conditions that they did a year ago or two years ago. But, um, but fundamentally, the metric is apprehensions. And, you know, what we don't know is what's going to happen in Yuma two harvests from now when they, you know, when, when, when the labor market perhaps comes back in a different way, there are all kinds of things that we could project that are likely to change in the future that will change the apprehensions. And it may not mean less success or more success, it's just that apprehensions is a relative term that is not, uh, doesn't fully tell the story. We, it's a valid measure, but it can't be the only measure, and it's basically been the only measure. Okay, well, thank you very much.